Welcome to another episode of Fishing Northwest Arkansas. Today we're going to discuss what you'll need if you're a beginner and just want to go out and have a good day on the water. First, let's talk about your rod. So, let me back up here. What I would recommend is a basic spinning rod. You can go and get these super cheap at Walmart. I mean like 15 bucks, that's really cheap. Um, and you can get them either paired with line or not paired with line. Um, if you get one paired with line, um, it'll probably be around five pound monofilament, so, you know. But if you don't get one paired with line, what I recommend you do is you get, uh, what, what line I use right, what line I'm using is, um, 10 pound monofilament, so that's a good, um, it's a good all around starter fishing rod reel combo. You'll need a spinning rod, and a lot of times they'll, I would get a rod reel combo, like, they'll come with the rod and the reel, that's what I mean. Because if you're a beginner, probably, the chances are you might, but there's a 50-50 chance that you'll buy a bait casting reel for a spinning reel. So, and if you go to Bass Pro Shops, like, ask someone if you want to get a rod reel combo. Ask them what a spinning rod is. Just tell them you're a noob. They'll probably help you out. Um, yeah, that's the basic setup. Um, now, I'm going to go to moving baits. That's what I'll say. And a good beginner moving bait is the spinner bait. Okay, this is just some spinner bait. They'll usually come with skirts like this. See all the little rubber elastic wire. I don't even know how to describe this. Um, but if you were going to start out fishing, I would recommend the Strike King Bitsy Bug. It's a very, very compact lure, but so far, that might have been what my personal best was on. No, that was my um, second personal best. It's my personal best for a while. It was like two and a half pounds. But, um, and, you know, what I did here on this one is the skirt fell off, so I just put a little Bass Assassin ribbon tail worm on it, on the trailer, took it off all the skirt, haven't used it yet, but looks like it'll be good. Um, so I'm going to go over colors. If you're going to fish at night or in the dark, go with something black, black blades, maybe, um, maybe some of these green blades, I don't know. But something dark for dark water, and then if you're in, I mean, like, in the dark, not muddy water. Muddy water, you'll get the chartreuse colors, or chartreuse and white, or chartreuse and orange. That was my favorite color for the Strike King Bitsy Bug. Um, chartreuse and orange. And if you're going to go clear water, um... Something like this. This isn't a spinnerbait, but something fairly shad colored, like white. Um, let me show you my shad colored spinnerbait. Something like that, maybe. So, um, if you want to go into more detail about spinnerbaits, um, I currently don't have a video 
up right now, but I'm sure a lot of people do. Let me get in here a little bit. It's probably a bad frame. Um, so I'm just going to run over the ones that I showed you in case you didn't get a good look at them. There's that chartreuse one. Here's the shack one. Here's the one that I took the skirt off of. Alright, now I'm going to really quickly go over this. This is a buzz bait. Okay? I'm going to bend the line around a little bit. And what it does is basically you cast it out and I don't, you shouldn't let these sink. Um, and what it'll do is you'll reel it and it'll this thing will spin right here. And they don't all come with this little metal thing right there. That's just for added noise. Um, like, um, anyway, I just chose this color and this one because it looked nice. It's a booyah. Um, it's got the clacker on it. I don't remember what they're really called. The Booyah Boo Buzz, something like that. Um, that box, it, that's pretty much it for that box. Um, oh wait, blades. Um, I don't know too much about blades, and like I said, if you want more detail, Go to someone else's video on spinner baits, how to fish spinner baits in clear water, how to fish spinner baits in muddy water. Um, but basically, what you're gonna want to do is, okay, this is my rule of thumb. A lot of people will have different, but silver for clear, um, bronze for fairly muddy, I guess. Um, Colorado, if you're going for something like a bluegill or something like a bigger forage item. And if you're going for something slim, go with the willow blade. Um, the willow blade, like, this is a minnow imitation kind of, I guess you could say. Um, but that's it for the spinnerbait box. along a rocky bank. 
and especially like you want to hit it against the rocks. You want to beat these bills against the rocks. These little plastic things are the bills. You want to beat them against the rocks. So what will happen is it'll go -da 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 boom, and it'll make a little like movement and go around the rock. And what happens then is the bass sees that it thinks it's trying to like swim around the rocks and like lose the bass. So the bass chases after it. And yeah, um, these are real shallow. I wouldn't recommend deep cranks because that's a little more technique. And I don't think they're wide enough for the spinning rod. I would go with the Rebel Bluegill, the KVD 1.0, or the KVD 1.5. I wouldn't go with the 2.5. Too much. I think it would be too much drag. And if you got a fish, way too much drag. Um, but. I'm gonna go over the color schemes. So, dirty water, water. I mean, like two to a f two inches to a foot of visibility. You want a chartreuse black back. Um, they have a color that has a cracked black back. Mm. And also, if you have a bait casting rod, I forgot to go over that. Um, I, as far as bait casters go. Flukrat Master recommends a 7. I'm just going to call them speed. The first number, 7, should be 7. In, and the second number should be in between 1 and 5. What I would recommend is this is 6, but the same thing. But I think you should go with Fluke Master. He has a lot more experience than me, and I don't even know what I'm... Just go with the 7. Um... If there's a lot of bluegill in your pond and it's kind of muddy, this is kind of a ghost minnow thing. But if it's kind of muddy, I mean, maybe go with this. And but if there's bluegill in your pond, go with something like this. And if it's like really, really clear, go with something like that. Um, if there's if you're fishing in a bigger body of water, there'll a lot of times be shad. And what you want to do? Is you want to get one of these colors or one of these colors? You can see the similarities. You just want one of blue back, a yellow line down it, and then a white belt. Or you can get something more like. Yo. 
Young Dinger. There's also Gary Yamamoto Stank Sankos, not Stankos. Um, and also Bass Pro Shop Stickos. If you want to go have a good day, I'd recommend getting Young Dingers. I would recommend getting the smallest size out of all of these, because you can catch big fish on little baits, but you can't catch little fish on big fish. I mean, they might go after it, but you have less of a chance. So basically what I mean by that is you'll catch more fish probably than with a bigger bait. So that's why I don't have any swim baits or anything. Um, oh wait, I forgot top water. Favorite category. Basically, 
You have to find out the rhythm for that lure. You have to twitch your rod. It's really hard to explain. It's called walking the dog. I'll show you here with the rod I have for an example. I'm just going to show you the tip. You just want to do this. In a, in a motion. And you want to do it from the side. Like, say the lure is out this way. You want to do this. I'm going to lower down a little bit. And you want to get a rhythm down. Otherwise, it won't walk properly. When I first started fishing this, I had such trouble because I would like jerk it, jerk it, jerk it, jerk it, and then jerk it, jerk it. I tried to fish it like I would fish a popper. And how do you want to fish a popper? I didn't go over that. You want to jerk it in erratic action, which means like up to three times. I don't go much over three times. I might go four every so often, but you just jerk, 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 jerk. No rhythm. Just jerk it, pause it, pauses range from like one, three seconds. Not too long. Top water is for when you see them on top. I don't really like throwing top water when I can't see them unless I'm throwing this around vegetation. So they're all, most of the time, always be around floating vegetation or by reed beds. The next thing I want to talk about is prep bait. This is a head and tiny torpedo. Good finesse, um, good to throw on that spinner, spinning rod. Um, what you can do with these, you can reel it in, and this little tail thing will spin right here. It'll spin and it'll make a little wake across the water. And you can also walk it, and that little thing will cause a little commotion, a little more commotion than it would with the head and the spook. Um, like I said, walking it only for when they're really active, I guess. And this is the Rebel Frog R. Very interesting bait. Most of people, most people I've heard of are complaining about it because it doesn't walk. And Brendan, from Brendan's Fabulous World of Fishing, um, he did a review on this. And he explained it as a stroking bait, which means you'll take a long pull of the rod, a long sweep, and the bait will go, because that's how a frog swims. It'll like pull in its legs and push out and it'll make a long sweep across the water. So that's really my analogy for fishing this. If you want to walk it, you have to put your rod side to side, really. Okay. Another thing as far as soft baits go. Grubs. Gotta love them. Um, what I... Grubs, these come in double tail and single tail. You can put them on the back of a jig. Did I bring my jig down here? No, I didn't. What did Joy? I don't even know what I said. And um, I mean, you can make these like the smallest Texas rig baits ever, or you can put them on a jig head. And I'll get into that in a minute when I go into turning the tackle. But pretty good bait. You want to either swim this or hop it off the bottom. Um, swimming it, you just reel. It's as simple as it is. You can let it sink if you want to. All up to you. Experiment. See what the fish are doing. You might want to switch through these lures. And I'm not saying you need all of this to have a successful day. Um, whenever I would fish these is during spring fall, especially spring, when they're spawning, that's a really good time to go out and fish. And um, another tip, if you, if you have any local tackle stores, locally based, go there and ask them what the fish are biting on, ask them what they're doing, if they're moving up to spawn. Just ask them a few questions, ask them what they think you'll need to go and have a good day of fishing.
They might recommend things off this list, and if they do, there's probably a reason for that. And I'm not covering everything. I mean, don't even have, looking at it, I don't have everything that I want to do. Um, next thing I'll go over is, where did I put them? Where did I put them? KVD 2.5 and even the KVD 1.5 bait 
caster still. But, um, big spinner baits, like half an ounce spinner baits, gotta pay attention to the weights on the spinner baits. Um, because if you cast some spinner baits out, they might break your line. Like a little whiplash thing. Um, that's it for finesse, but you can also get swim jigs. Um, they have a little pointy thing. They have a little pointy nose, unlike the football head jig, which has the head that looks like a football. Pretty self-explanatory name. What's that? That's not supposed to be that. Um, yeah, this is for fishing in grass. So, like, if you can see, like, say, hydrilla, that's where one of these would come in. You could swim right through that. The pointy nose really helps. And this weed guard. Forgot to mention the weed guard. The weed guard is what helps it. Like when it goes through the grass, the weeds will come over and they'll go right even with the hook and they'll come over. See how easy my hand did that? Um, sometimes you can put a swim bait trailer on these, like little swim baits. I wouldn't recommend for starting out, but you can this is a Buddha in scene swim jig. Um, this one is pretty cool because it's got a flat bottom. You can skip it. Um, I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner though. Once again, skipping, roll cast, or advanced techniques, I myself don't know. Um, this is a chatterbait, also known as the bladed swim jig. Um, you swim it through the water. Also interchangeable with spinner baits. Still, beginners recommend um, the striking bitsy bitsy god. I don't know. That's the name of the um, jig. Striking bitsy bug. Bitsy structure bug. Something. Um, but anyway, sorry for my legs. Ah, a little weird. It's not a condition, I just do that all the time. Um, I have this on a Zoom, this is a Zoom something. It's a Zoom trailer, it's nice, compact, nose hooked. Um, because it's not big enough to go all the way down. And it gives it a bigger presentation. See, it makes it a little bit bigger than it, looking than it would with out with it all the way up but chatterbait you should throw on a bait caster um do i have this covered yeah okay another great thing if you want to fish for something maybe besides that i mean um the little things you might get bit by bluegill. And how to tell a bluegill from a bass bite is a bass, you'll feel like a like a thump, thump, thump on your rod. You gotta feel, you gotta hold your rod, and if you feel like a tug, 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 you have to set the hook. I'll show you what that means in a second. But um, this is power bait. You can use this when you're fishing for bluegill, brim, whatever you want to call it. Even trout, if you're into that. I am personally not so far. I've never caught a trout. Never had any luck with trout. Um, it's really stinky. Real stinky. Um, colors. I don't really. I'm not good with this. What I would recommend doing with this kind of thing is I would recommend getting a split shot weight. Um, it'll say it on the package, split shot. Spelt the same way split and shot. Split dash shot. Um, yeah, power bait comes in the dough, comes in trout nuggets, and it comes in crappie nibbles. Really hard things to say for some reason. Um, they come in colors such as pink. Oh, and there's a salmon eggs thing. Never tried this. I had them once. I don't know where they went. Um. Yeah. Um. Bait. Another thing. Worms on that same rig. Um. You'd put it. Okay. Here's the rig for bait, basically. Um. Let me get the 
and let the string go. And then it'll be, you can slide it, but it'll sit on your line like this. You may think that's weird, but I'll show you in a second. And then you put one of these little guys, split shot. They have a little mouth. I don't know if you can see that, but you put it on your line. And then you get a pair of pliers, pair of pliers. I don't have one right now, so that's really loose. It falls off. It's my fault. And then you tie a hook on. I don't really have any booger hooks right now. Wow, that's embarrassing. Um, but you adjust the hook. And what I do for adjusting, I wouldn't cut off and retie it. I just slide the bottom. So the barber should be able to slide pretty easily. And then I put the split shot in the middle, I'd say. Between your bait, your hook, and your thing. But if your bobber sits on its side like this in the water, it should be sitting like this because of this floaty thing. It should be sitting right like that and your bait dangling down here and then the fish grab it and it goes boom. But if it's sitting on the side, that means you need to make it shorter. And then we go up. I like to put my bait in the middle of the water column. That means I want it to be sitting right in the middle. Because the fish can look up, see it, look down, see it, look forward, see it. Um, yes, I'm going to pop all this off. Ah, I'm going to throw it to the side. Um, yeah, I like this bobber. I like these bobbers, the slim bobbers, and get the foam ones. Don't get the plastic ones. Or the round, I don't like the round ones as much either. But get, don't get the plastic ones. Plastic ones, they'll fill up with water and no good. Foam ones, you can bang them on things, and that'll make a little dent in them, but they'll still be good. dragging off. And this is probably starting to get boring to you. Okay, so basically, here is, okay, I talked about Texas Rig earlier. I'm going to give you the crash course in Texas Rigs. Um, I'm going to use my demonstration line. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get one of these. They're called bullet weights. That's what you want to look for. Um, I feel pretty light using one fourth. fourth blah, blah, blah. Probably go with three eighths, I guess. And then you'll get a hook. Um, a lot of times I'll go with the 4 up extra wide gap. They'll say EWG offset worm hook. That's what you want for Texas rigging. Some people like the EWGs. I do. Other people don't. Like I said, I'm not one of those people. Um, I'm going to try a Palomar knot. It's really simple. You put the line through the eye of the hook, and then you go back through the eye of the hook. Actually, just look up polymer knot, because I really don't want to go into detail.
right? So I've got the knot tied up. So. Then now.